Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss about wireless network technologies and its uh, concepts. First, we'll talk about protocols. It consists of set of rules need to start the data communication. Basically, it's categorized into three. Wireless network protocols, internet protocols, and network routing protocols. Protocols defines what is communicated, how it is communicated, and when it is communicated. There are three key elements of protocols. Syntax, semantics, and uh, timing. Syntax refers to the structure of data, simply known as what need to be communicated. Semantics refers to the meaning of each section of bits simply how the data will reach the destination and finally uh, timing it's basically managing the time when data should be sent without overload and how fast that can be sent and next we'll move on to standards standards basically provides guidelines to, to the service providers and other vendors and ensure the kind of interconnectivity which is necessary in a day-to-day -day marketplace. Data communication standards falls in uh, two categories. One is uh, de facto and other one is uh, de jure. De facto is standards uh, that have not been approved by an uh, organized body but are adopted as because of widespread now, de jure standards formulating laws by an officially recognized uh, body and then forums standardization easier many groups who have developed forums made up of representatives from the interested corporations and then we'll uh, move on to OSI model layers and functions Mainly, there are seven layers in OSI model. Now, those are physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and finally, application layer. Now, we'll see the functions of each layers. First, we'll talk about physical layer. Physical layers converts the digital data so that it can be sent through physical medium simply moves data between hosts example Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and etc uh, data link layer in data link layer it provides media access and physical addressing simply divides the stream of bits into frames example HTTP and uh, SSL TLS example HTTP uh, SSL and TLS then uh, network layer this layer provides uh, path determination using logical addressing and it's responsible for the, the delivery of the individual uh, packets example uh, IPv4 IPv6 and etc next we'll see what is transport layer in transport layer it provides end-to-end -end connections and it's responsible for the delivery of a message from one process to another example UDP and TCP and next we'll move on to session layer in this session layer this layer is responsible for dialogue control and synchronization example NetBIOS, NFS and SCP presentation layer basically presentation layer do presenting the data and handles encryption and de decryption of data example jpeg gif files and mpeg finally the application layer in this application layer it provides a user interface to communicate with these layers by a user uh, for this example, uh, SMTP, STTP, and etc. Uh, next, we'll move on to characteristics of signal.
there are four characteristics of signal peak attribute period frequency and phase first we'll see the peak attribute is the maximum execution of the wave from the zero point uh, peak to peak amplitude is the distance from the negative peak to a positive peak in the case of the sine wave the peak to peak value is exactly twice the peak value because the wave forms semantical but th this is not the necessarily the case with the vibration wave forms next period when a signal completes a pattern in a given time frame that is called as period of a signal and it will repeat this over uh, identical subsequent period after completing full pattern is called as a cycle in simple words period is a time needed to complete a full cycle next frequency frequency is the number of completed cycle in a second in an alternative current direction Hertz is the standard unit of frequency. Next, phase. Phase is the position of a point in a time on a waveform cycle. A complete cycle is defined as the interval required for the waveform to return to its uh, arbitrary initial value. Next, parameters of data signal. First, we'll see about the attenuation. It is a telecommunication term which used to reduce the strength of a signal. The attenuation means a loss of energy. When signals transmitting data through a medium, some data will loss and convert to heat. In order to compensate that loss of signals, we have to use amplifiers to amplify the signal. Next, the uh, distortion. This uh, distortion means that the signal changes its form or shape. S signal components at the receiver have phases different from what they had at the sender. This problem occur in composite signal which are made with different frequencies. Next, we'll see the noise. This is another caution of impairment. There are several types of noise, such as the thermal noise, induced noise, crosstalk, and impulse noise, may corrupt the signals. It can affect image, video, audio files, and etc. This problem can occur in both an analog and digital signals. Next, we'll see the important aspects of digital transmission. The digital transmission relies on three important aspects digital to digital conversion, analog to digital conversion, transmission modes. First, we'll see the digital to digital conversion. The digital to digital conversion deals with representing digital data using digital signals. This conversion involves three techniques they are line coding, block coding, and scrambling. First, we'll see the analog to digital conversion. Analog to digital conversion deals with converting analog signals into the uh, digital signal. The most common method used in analog to digital transformation is pulse code modulation. It's called as PCM. And next, transmission mode. Transmission mode refers to the mechanism of transferring of data between two devices connected over a network. It is also called communication mode. These modes uh, direct the direction of flow of information. Then we'll talk about the digital to digital conversion, one of the technique line coding. In this line coding involves with converting digital data to digital signals. At, at the sender, digital data can encode it into a digital signal. At the receiver end, the digital data are recreated by decoding the digital signal. There are several line coding schemes used. Uh, unipolar line coding, polar line coding, uh, bipolar line coding, multi-level, multi-transition.
then we talk about pulse code modulation PCM this is the method used to convert analog signals to digital signals basically this PCM consists of following three steps sampling quantizing and encoding sampling samples are known as discrete values of amplitudes with a regular interval over time this sampling process is also called as pulse amplitude modulation PAM PAM signals are simply the result of a series of above mentioned discrete sample values next we'll talk about quantizing the quantization is done between the maximum amplitude value and the minimum amplitude value quantization is a approximation of the instantaneous analog value and then encoding encoding is converting each sample from right to left in time order to specific binary numbers and then we'll move on to uh, amplitude shift key it's called as ASK in amplitude shift keying the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied to create signal elements both frequency and phase remain constant while the amplitude changes then frequency shift keying FSK frequency of the carrier signal varies encoding to the digital signal changes FSK is a scheme of frequency modulation this FSK is less susceptible to errors than ASK receiver looks for specific frequency changes over a number of intervals then phase shift keying PSK phase of the carrier signal is changed by varying the sine and co cosine inputs at particular time PSK technique is widely used for wireless LANs along with RFID and Bluetooth communication. One of the major disadvantages is more complex signal uh, detection and recovery process than in ASK and FSK. Next we'll talk about amplitude modulation AM. The amplitude of the carrier signal varies in uh, accordance with instantaneous amplitude of the modulation signal next we'll move on to error detection the oldest method of error correction involves using a parity it works by adding an additional bit to each character word transmitted the state of the bit is determined by a number of factors such as the type of parity and the number of logic one bit in the data character. repetition code is another mechanism that relates to error detection uh, checksum is an error detection method that is modular arithmetic sum of message message code the checksum is an error detection method that is modular arithmetic sum of message code words of fixed word length uh, checksum schemes involve uh, latitudinal redundancy checks parity bits and checks the digits next uh, error correction there are two ways of error correction methods one way is once the error was detected the receiving end will request sending end to retransmit the same data again the uh, other way of uh, correcting error is to use error correcting codes available in the receiving end to uh, detect and correct the errors next we move on to the transmitting ways first we'll see about the twisted pair cable the twisted pair cable it arranged in a it's two insulated copper wires arranged in a twisted pattern in order to minimize the electromagnetic interference between adjacent pairs this is used to transmit voice and data communication it is used for low frequency transmission media there are two types of twisted pair cable one is STP another one is UDP
Uh, STP means shielded twisted bar cable. This bar is rubbed with a metallic soil to insulate the pair of electromagnetic interference. Then unshielded twisted bar cable. Each wire is insulated with plastic wrapped but the pair is only covered with outer wire converting. There are two types of unshielded twisted pair cable and the data rates of UTP also different. Uh, 3 UTP, 5 UTP. 3 UTP up to uh, 16 megabits per second, 5 UTP uh, 10 megabits per second and better performance is from 5 UTP. Then we'll move on to for fiber optic cable. The optical transmitter converts the signal from the electrical energy to uh, optical energy. There are two types of optical transmitters. Uh, light emitter diode, semiconductor laser diode, LED and L uh, LED and SLD. Next we'll talk about carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. CSMA or CD. Mostly this method used in wired network. In this method, a sitter mostly this method used in wired network. In this method, a station sends the medium whether there is uh, traffic or not. If the transmission media is not idle, the station will wait. When it monitors that medium is idle, the station will send the data. After it sends a frame to see if the transmission was successful if so the station is completed however there is a collusion however if there is a collusion happens the frame is sent again and then carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance CSMA CA CSMA CA is used in wireless networks in this method, the station will check for ongoing transmissions. If it detects there is no transmissions going on, then station will send its data. Once the destination device receives the data, it will respond back with an uh, acknowledgement. In case if the sending station does not receive the data, it will respond back with an acknowledgement. In case of sending CSMA CA is used is wireless CSMA CA is used in wireless networks in this method the station will checks for ongoing transmissions if it detects there is no transmission going on then station will send its data once the destination device receives the data it will respond back with an acknowledgement in case if the sending station does not receive an acknowledgement from the destination it will assume that it did it will assume that it did not get the data and resend it frequency division multi access fdma each mobile is assigned a separate frequency channel for the duration of the call Sufficient guard band is required to prevent uh, adjacent channel interference. Usually, mobile terminals will have one downlink frequency band and one uplink frequency band. Different cellular network protocols use different frequencies. Frequency is a previous frequency is a precious and scarce resource. We are running out of it. Uh, time division multi-axis (TDMA). Uh, to time uh, time is divided into slots and only one mobile terminal uh, transmit during each slot like during the lecture only one can talk but others may take the flow in turn each next each user given a specific slot no uh, competition in cellular network unlike carrier sense multiple access in Wi-Fi oh, thank you